If we consider spiritual experiences of contact with forces or immaterial beings, when we move back in time, trying to locate its origins, we find out that they are as old as our own history. Some individuals in primitive tribes appear to have been responsible for consulting invisible forces and beings in order to guide their people. This is also found in ancient Egyptian, Babylonian, Greek and Roman civilizations. In the Middle Ages, mainly in Europe, spiritual experience of this type had a negative connotation once the church accused its opponents of magical practices involving pacts with demonic forces and beings. Maybe the most famous case was that of Joan of Arc, who claimed to hear voices and to have visions which later were allegedly confirmed as true. In the 18th century, we identify the same type of experience in the history of spiritualistic movements such as Emanuel Swedenborg's, who claimed he had visions of a spiritual dimension of reality and spiritual beings he described as angels. Still, in the 18th century, a German doctor called Franz Anton Mesmer postulated the existence of a universal magnetic fluid with healing powers. His practices, which later became what we nowadays know as hypnosis, used to put his patient in a sort of a sleepy condition similar to somnambulism, and at times secondary personalities would communicate and claim to be spiritual beings, some of them angelical, some demonical. the 19th century as one of the most important periods in history, but mainly for the history and philosophy of science, because it was then that the scientific activity as we know today was inaugurated, and it became the main agent of a revolution in the mentality of mankind that persists until today. Now, for the study of the relations between science and religion, 19th century appears to me as a crucial period, since scientific institutions and theories conferred authority to scientists to have a saying about the world. As a consequence, I believe that not only the tension between these two spheres of knowledge intensified, but also the public had to face a new challenge, to deal with this diversity of authority, especially if they did not always agree on their points of view. Well, as we've seen previously, the atmosphere of that period was of transition and therefore of uncertainty. It was in this context that the spiritual experience we've been talking until now will take a very important place within the public and touch their interest in a very vigorous way, mainly in North America and in Europe. It was in this period that the movement called the Modern Spiritualism organized itself around the re-edition of experiences that are as old as our societies, experiences of contact and communication with entities that presented themselves as the spirits of the departed, many of them identifying themselves as the relatives of those who were there looking for comfort in spiritualistic seances. From then on, the practice of communication with the dead became known as mediumship. It is very important to point out that modern spiritualists spread like a fever in that period, gathering hundreds of thousands of people from different social classes, and that those people wanted to know what science had to say about those phenomena. This way, renowned scientists started to investigate such phenomena utilizing scientific approaches.